nature. Uh, how many of you know that nature is, means exactly as he is? Now, uh, we have a mic here. There's a mic on each side, and they're both on, ready to go. Okay. Now, what we want to do, who has something we can set for five minutes? And uh, we're not being mean or anything, because what, what we want to do, uh, whoever's the first on the thing here, I, I lost it, and then God let me find it. So whoever's the first one, Brother Michael, he's going to teach tonight on baptism for the dead. That is a sticky and that takes a lot of research. Okay, so when we're done, he's got five minutes of no interruption. You got, Sister Shirley, you got something too, right? Because Sister Shirley, mm -hmm. that's the little straight from the Pyramid Circle. Okay, Sister Shirley, you got five minutes. At the end of that five minutes, then we got five minutes to tell you to the wall and find out what you got. Ask you questions. Put your <coughs> brother Humphrey. I don't like that. Well, get used to it because this puts your brain in action. Somebody say amen. This, this makes you. The verse of the Bible says, "Be instant what? In season, in season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort all along." So you've got to be Johnny Quick. So if you're studying up and you know your scripture, and somebody runs into you, hits you with something, you're in. Somebody say amen. You don't say, "Well, I think that's in the Bible someplace." Uh, let, let me see. But if you got the word hid in your heart, memorized in your heart, you got an answer. The all the Bible says you're always ready to give an answer to it. We ought to be able to give somebody an answer. So say amen. So you ready, my brother? Yes. I, 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 I say by him. Brother Michael, brother Michael first. He's the first one to listen. Baptism for the dead. First Corinthians 15, 29. You gonna read that for us? Absolutely. Who's going to time me? Somebody have a okay, phone to set up. Who, who's going to timing thing? Okay. He's got to watch. Somebody time it for you. You got to watch for that. Fifteen. I go time you. Yeah. Okay, brother John, you time him, and when it comes, uh, it's five minutes. Go beep. All right. <laughs> All right. So, First Corinthians fifteen twenty nine. Microphone. Thank you. Camera. Yeah. First. 1 Corinthians 15, 29. <coughs> Else what shall they do which are bap baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? Uh, the first thing we need to do is to uh, establish the context of this uh, chapter. Um, he's a, Paul is addressing the issue. There are a number of Corinthians who are questioning whether uh, Christ actually did rise from the dead, and uh, and they're also and some are also questioning whether the dead actually rise at all. Uh, I'm going to re now read verses 12 through 19. Now Christ be preached that he rose from the dead. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is also in vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he was raised up in Christ, whom he has not raised up, if so be that the dead not rise. For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep, in Christ are perished. If in this life, in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Okay, so what he's basically saying is that if Christ is not risen, then um, our faith in Christ to uh, raise us up from the dead is utterly pointless, and uh, we're just wasting our time preaching Christ and. Um, and any, any kind of faith in him as a savior is also in vain. And that's, uh, that's a question, and that's an issue Paul ta obviously takes personally because uh, the entire, the 12 apostles' uh, ministry was based entirely upon the, re the resurrection of Christ. Because that was proof that he was the Messiah. There had been several, 
There have been several others in the past claiming to be messiahs, and they were all killed, and, and any kind of uh, movement they had going died off with them. But that wasn't the case for Christ. Which, uh, which then brings us to the uh, subject of uh, baptism. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if it does not rise at all? Now, something to point out here is that uh, Paul says, what shall they do? They don't say, what should we do? It says, what should they do? That means that this, um, this baptism for the dead is not something he participates in. That's right. It's, um, he's not uh, condemning it. Uh, he's also uh, not endorsing it. He's just uh, identifying it. Now, what is baptism? Uh, baptism is a symbolic act of, uh, of death and resurrection. You go down underneath the water, that represents death going into the ground, and then you, resur and then you rise up uh, completely uh, free from sin. Uh, the water represents the washing of your sin. You arise, reject, re you you arise completely regenerated. Um, uh, in John chapter 3, Christ says, you must be born again. Well, to be born again, I suppose you first must be dead. Otherwise, uh, there is no, there's no point in saying again, is there? Um, when we refer back to uh, verse 17, it says, uh, you are still in your sins. And Romans chapter 8, for the wages of sins is death. So if you're still in your sins, you're dead. And, uh, and thus, the, uh, and thus uh, doing baptism is, uh, and if there's no resurrection of Christ, uh, you're dead in your sins. And thus making baptism an utterly pointless religious ritual. Now in this case, it seems that uh, some of the Corinthians were, being, uh, were, were offering themselves up as substitutes for, uh, I suppose, believers who had died but had not been baptized. So they're stepping up, with, so they're stepping up and saying, I'll be baptized in so-and-so's place, thus baptism for the dead. And um, Paul is this saying, well, if you don't believe that um, there's been any resurrection, what is the point? I mean, what are you trying to accomplish if the dead aren't, if, the, if, the, if, you're, if those you're substituting for aren't going to rise anyway? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, the question is what? Put some good ones on. What? Put some questions on. We've got five minutes here for questions. Other than one, don't forget one here. Unless you have more questions, you're going to have one. Questions? Does anybody have any questions for you? Yeah, I didn't catch what book it was. I got 12 to 19. First Corinthians. What? Yeah. First Corinthians 15. 15. Yeah. yeah. It says these words. Else what shall they do, or the Bible brought up the point they do, which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? Okay. Anybody got any questions? If not, I'll try to explain it a little bit better. Okay. First of all, we have to understand, the Bible says repent and be baptized. Cults they put include Catholic Church and the Mormons and the Nephi. All kinds of people all around the world puts emphasis on baptism. I was at the York Fair back a couple of years, quite a few years ago. See two guys walk up through, and the Lord said, Cult, stand still. They come walking up to me, and I said, How you doing, guys? They walked over to me and said, Can we ask you a question? Are you saved? I knew that there was a cult. How? No, no certain clothes, but I'm not sure it's cold. I said, I think I am, but you tell me. They said, well, how did you get saved? I said, according to the Bible, repent, be baptized, for the remission of my sins. They said, you have a false salvation. I said, I do. They said, yes. You see, you've got to be baptized first, <coughs> then repent. Well, what did they just do? They just turned the scriptures around. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why you cannot baptize a baby because a baby can't repent for the remission of sin. We'll, we'll be talking about the remission of the baptism. But people, including the Corinthians, 
all kinds of other people. Once they believe in baptism, but Jesus is the one. So they baptize, and so when they come along, here comes Jesus, they don't believe in Jesus is the resurrection. Then he turns around and says to their face and says, well, don't wait a minute. You don't believe we should baptize in Jesus' name. What are you baptizing the dead for? How many of you know you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay. So this, this is what happens. So if you join the Mormon church, they will have you go clean back, clean back as far as ever. And you have to stand in for baptism for all your past relatives. And they call that salvation. How many of you, you could be put down underneath that water a billion sticking times. It's not going to save somebody. Anybody see what I'm So a lot of people get in cults. They get all, it just upsets me. When really. I run into people that gets caught up in this kind of stuff. I have family members right now, Jehovah's Witness. Don't believe in hell. All 144,000 are going to heaven. It's nuts. It's nuts. Any questions for Brother Michael yet? Anything? I was going to say that, you know, you're basically dealing with spirits. And the people are deceived. And a lot of people who are in cults, I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but their eyes are even glassy, just like people that are on drugs. And we have authority, you know, and it, it, it might take fasting and prayer. But that's where it's at. We just gotta pray for these people and pray that God softens their heart because otherwise it's just like talking to a, a spirit, you know? She said about his glassy eyes. Did you take notice? Uh, I forget who it was the other day. He was a Christian. He said, Did you see his eyes? Oh, Todd. Mm -hmm. He said, As soon as I looked at his eyes, he said, I knew something was the matter with him. How many know? Uh, <coughs> Charles Manson. Uh, you, you look at Adolf Hitler. You, you, you look, look at uh -huh. any people like that. Too. Uh, as soon as you look at their eyes, you see a spirit. Yeah. Uh -huh. A spirit. But how many of you know if you're blind, uh, you can still tell who they are because what comes out of the mouth? Right. Right. A mouth. It comes from the heart. A mouth will speak. My heart's a little clear on that. Mm -hmm. so, Shirley, you got anything there that uh, you want to ask question? Okay, so so if somebody comes to you and says, well, you can be baptized for the dead, you can. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a cult, you go ahead and do it, baby. Mm -hmm. So before we baptize anybody here on the 11th, so forth, they have to repent. Mm -hmm. And they be baptized. I was just going to say that uh, doesn't... Um Catholic faith, believe in like praying for people after they catch them. Oh, yeah. Praying for people. They need to do purgatory. It's called purgatory. They don't believe in the baptism as much as they do so many works. Yeah, that's true. You go into the priest and ask the priest, you know, I'm not sure if it's Brother Joe made it and so forth, and he said, well, just go do X amount of works for it. You can pay so much money on X amount of works and so forth. Now they're going to have coming with us all junk. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, if it's not in the Bible, don't, don't buy it. So mm -hmm. say amen. Amen. Okay. Our next person is Annabelle. She's going to be talking about outer darkness. Now, I have some hard questions here for her. So we're going to. <laughs> now, the reason, the reason I'm doing this, please, please understand. The motive behind it, not, not me as much as God doing it, he wants to cause you to put in advanced training. Brother John was in the service, we started out at basic training. What, what's basic training? That's breaking you down to nothing and bringing you up the way the military can shoot to be. Okay. So basically it's just the basics. Okay. Your ABCs. Okay. But then you gotta go to another school. Then you call it advanced training, advanced training, advanced training. How many know we always ought to be in advanced training? Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> so God wants you, all of us to be hallelujah. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm right over here. I'm sitting down right here. Oh, okay. Oh, 
So, God wants us all to be advanced trained. To learn more and more and more. So we can keep it work. This is why uh, Sunday night I preach where Paul speaks there. He says, uh, when I come to you, you desire to speak the great deep things of God. The hidden mysteries and so forth. And Jesus, after the door of Meshachedek, he said, which, I, which things are hard to say and hard to say. But I see that you are dull and hearing. He said, where you ought to be teaching, someone needs to teach you over again. And he said, uh, you can't give a strong meat because a strong meat belongs to them that are what? Always. Even by reason of what? Yes. Use. So God wants to raise us up stronger, higher than we've ever been before. So uh, I preached that message called application. Apply. You got to apply. So it's amen. So in these last days, you're going to run into more cults and more devils. So if you don't know your word, oh, yes. they'll shoot you down so mm -hmm. I mean, I had people come up and tell me the Bible says this, and I said, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, no, don't. You tell me where it's at. Well, I know it's in there. I said, no, you don't know it's in there. They, they, they make scriptures up. Okay. So, we're, brother, we're having, uh, I'm putting everybody, not everybody, but certain people on the spot. And then Brother Michael had to do a teaching, a five minute teaching in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 29. It says, why are, the, why are the dead baptized? We find out that that is nothing but a cult. Back, you can baptize all you want to, but that don't save somebody. You can't be baptized, some say that. So amen, amen, that. amen, yes. Now we're going into yes. Sister Annabelle, and Sister Annabelle is going to be teaching on, and God gave me these things, on outer darkness. Bible talks about uh, the outer darkness. Bible talks about the lake of fire. Bible talks about uh, the torment and all this. Stuff. But she's going to have to teach on outer darkness. Sure. Now that hey, caused her to have to get in the Bible and, and really do some research on outer darkness. So I've had experience in outer darkness. I was there. So, uh, we're going to find out. What <laughs> Amen. Five minutes, Tyra, my brother. Wow. She's got five minutes, no interruption, and then at the end of five minutes, we're going to nail her to the wall. So skip that. Okay, ready? Ready. Okay, um, well, I was uh, studying our darkness, and I found out that it is, it is mentioned three times in the Bible, and the three times are in Matthew. Well, all three of them, all, all three times are also mentioned in each three times is mentioned in Matthew, the book of Matthew. In Matthew uh, 8, 12, Matthew 22, 13, and Matthew 25, 30. In Matthew 8, 12, it says, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast, into, be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In Matthew 22:13, it says, Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then in uh, Matthew 25:30, it says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now when I was reading all three of those, each time I was talking about outer darkness, those are the only three times that outer darkness is mentioned in the Bible. But it also, um, also in each of those three verses, it has weeping and gnashing of teeth associated with outer darkness. And there's um, when I was looking about when I was looking up references to weeping and gnashing of teeth, it's mentioned seven times in the Bible, and those, those three verses were three of them, and then there's four other verses. Uh, so, so uh, to me, you know, all evidence points to outer darkness being identical to hell. It is called outer because it is outside of God's kingdom, and those in outer darkness have been thrust out of the kingdom. It is called darkness because it is a place of darkness. 
So, um, <clears throat> to me, it, you know, outer darkness is a, a synonym, which, you know, it means hell. For it is a place of darkness. Um, I was going to say also that in the outer darkness, it, it also associates uh, fire. When, when you see the word darkness mentioned in the Bible, it also talks about fire, um, which um, the light, you know, light and darkness are exactly the opposite. You know, in the kingdom of God, you have Jesus as the light there, and so darkness, you know, represents hell. So I was going to read um, in Matthew chapter 8, starting with verse 5, exactly where it was talking about outer darkness. Uh, one of the three that was mentioned that I had mentioned. <laughs> so, uh, in verse 5, Matthew chapter 8, verse 5, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to him that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And uh, in, in one place where I was studying, um, you know, they, they were saying that it was referring to um, when it said that the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. That they were, you know, it was like Jesus was saying the, the Jewish people that didn't receive him, you know, were, were going to be cast into outer darkness. But it also, he was also, Jesus was also talking about faith in this chapter. And okay. It, okay. That's <laughs> right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who wants to know her first? Okay, I'll go first. Uh, she just mentioned the last word, which is my first question. She just said the last word was faith. Mm -hmm. So uh, this may feel like I'm lobbing a, a uh, you know, a ball to hit it out the park. But um, <clears throat> what was the subjects that were being cast, and why into the outer darkness? Yeah, Jesus was marveling about um, how how the centurion had so great faith, mm -hmm. and one of the things that will not enter into heaven is unbelief. Uh, there's uh, a list of things in Revelations that, uh, I'm going to remember it was in Revelations, a list of things that were, that were not going to enter into heaven, and one of them was unbelief, and that's why I believe Jesus was marveling so much at his great faith. And that was the last point I was going to try to make before the five minutes. <laughs> okay, somebody else. Regards to darkness, um, in Second Peter two verse seventeen, uh, Peter discusses the ultimate faith of false teachers, and he says these are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest. For whom is reserved the blackest of darkness forever? Now it sounds to me like um, he's saying there are various levels of darkness, and the false teachers are going to receive the blackest of it. Uh, what do you say? I don't know. It could be, I, I have that verse here, uh, 2 Peter 2 4. For God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved in the judgment. You take verse that says hell and darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I believe that um, outer darkness represents hell. There could, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but there could be various levels of, you know, just, I don't know. Somebody else. 
so stuck. Um, there is various levels of uh, degrees in hell. And um, there's one place that talks about... Okay, well, I want to solve this right here. I do not accept anything except to be in the Bible. You can't show it to me in the Bible. Oh, boy. Okay? You heard me say it many times. Yeah. I've been taught that all my life. I said, where's that? You can't find it. Okay. It sounds good. Wait, I was going to say, isn't there a, a passage that talks about um, they will receive many stripes, the ones that are oh, teachers? Yeah. 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 Right. That, that, That's that thing, in the Bible. I know that means the Bible. Right. But the thing is, this Brother Humphreys has been a minister for 38 years. Right. Okay. I have received much. Now, Brother <laughs> Michael hasn't been there that long, so he'll, he'll receive little. Did I tell you a couple of stories that happened to me because I did not be obedient to God? Right. One time, remember? Right. Uh, I was on a 40 day fast. Right. And the first time I could stop 40 day fast. Yes. Just turn, right it, turn it off. Fast. I'll give you that. Yeah. I refused to go back on it mm -hmm. because it's Christmas time. Some guy stole my log skitter. I won't go through that whole thing. Yeah. Stole my log skitter. I found him along the highway. My son was 16 years old. Another man seen a vision of him. He lay along the highway and this and that. And uh, they come out of it with the guns and this and that. I'm not going through the whole story. But anyways, I, my ribs were broken. My jaw was broken. And I was in the hospital drowning on my own blood because my jaw was broken again. And the Lord spoke these words to me. Now you will fast. Mm -hmm. okay. I had went through many different punishments. Uh, Back not too long ago, because most of you know I've always been short tempered and this and that, and don't have patience and this and that. But God dealt with me over and over about my, you know, and all, all this stuff happened to me, including this operation I just had five months ago. He said these words to me, and I preached the message to him Do I have your full attention? <laughs> okay. So those that he loves, he chases. I'm going to chase my passions over, so I'll move on in that. So, uh, so I, I don't mean to sound like I'm putting anybody down or anything, but what happens is if we start to bring people's teachings or theories into it, like Brother Michael was teaching you in the Revelation, so he, he taught a lot of stuff that was good, but other people's belief about it, I don't even want to hear it. Right. Okay. So you understand where I'm coming from. Right. So we, we go like, like that baptism for the dead. We can go to the Mormons. The Mormons baptize for the dead, come back to the far back of the heaven view, and they can get it's not the right. and Another verse, too, is the one that says, to whom much is given, much is required. Exactly. And, then, and then also, um, I actually had a debate one time in that little church in New Oxford about this subject. <laughs> but there are different levels and degrees in hell and also um, in the Bible it talks about transgressions, iniquities and sins and there were different offerings that were required, you know, just like somebody who murders, you know, had a different requirement and things like that. There are different punishments, different levels here on earth and in hell. And I, well, uh, Jesus said that I, I disagree. You can disagree. Let, let, I can change the word for you. You gotta show it to me word for word in the Bible. Okay, I'll okay. Go. You gotta show it to me word for word. And after all these years, I've been through this thing many, many times. Now, these, these meetings are not to hit heads and butt heads, but it's to come to a full understanding, full knowledge, like the word revelations. Okay. If you and I start to listen to teachings that people come up with, they're doctor, church doctor. It's not in here. We're gonna be led astray. That, that's where you come up with Jim Guns and all this other kind of people. Stuff. Nowhere in the Bible you see where it talks about different punishments for different sins and this and that. Listen, my, my Bible says in the book of James, it says this here. Two servants keep the whole law. And yet if at one point, it's the only law. He said, said do not kill, said thou shalt not come out with the But thou spent at one point, you, you figure the big old deal. And that's a fine point. It's guilty of all. Oh. No, I mean, that's true, and you need Jesus to cover it, but there's still, and I can, I'll show it to you next week. I'll bring it, I'll bring it. 
Let me make sure she's got the altar show it to us. Right. Okay. So let me talk to her. Brother Murphy, you want to say something? I was just going to add on to what she said. If you cannot share it to me, Bob, I will discuss it. If you can share any scripture reference, I will discuss it. If you say so and so teaches it, I don't discuss it. Okay. Uh, a number of years ago, I saw Brother John Sister Linda. It's back in the middle 80s. I was not really living the way I should be living. Uh, I was doing some sneak sins. Anybody you know what sneak sins is? Nobody's seen that. I got away with this. I'm not talking about committing adultery or anything like that, but things that should not be done. The Lord dealt with me, and I kept on doing I knew what the Bible said about utter darkness and all this and that, but I did not fully understand it. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God lifted from me. I mean, the Spirit of God left from me, and I mean, I, you would never, I could not put in words what it felt like. It was such a void. I could not cry. Mm -hmm. I could not pray. Mm -hmm. I, I walked around. I don't know if you want to say. I walked around like a shell, like a zombie, uh, with nothing in it. I, I don't even know how to explain to you. In other words, I, I was existing, but I was empty. I was just there was just no life in me. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking my vehicle. Going back at a man's cornfield, going way back in the cornfield, and parked the old vehicle back in the cornfield. Bam! I'm in outer darkness. This was so horrible that I, I didn't know what to do. I was so far, so far away from God, so far away from everything. And then the, the emptiness of the, the outer darkness was just, I, I can't describe it. The darkness was so black that I can't even describe how black it was. I could not speak. I could not. Uh, I could not do anything. I was there, and there was no hope for me. Was I could not cry to God. I could not scream out to nobody. I was there. How long I was there, I don't know. All I know, I was there for a period of time. That quick, bang, I was like, believe me, I was crying. The Spirit of God fell on me again. I felt him so I was crying like a baby. I was screaming, baby, please never let that ever happen to me again. Please, please. I, I mean, I remember somebody in the mercy of Lord forever. I was really crying out now. I said to the Lord, because the Bible says, they shall know the taint, and all the tongue for the taint of darkness. I said, mm -hmm. I said, why was I not knowing my tongue uh, for the pain of darkness? It's because I, I was not tormenting you yet. Mm -hmm. Judgment had not been passed on me to torment the final judgment. Mm -hmm. Does that mean the lake of fire? Does fire have to have a color? Do, do we have to have fire that shows a light? There's so much we don't understand, and, and we don't need to take up and make a doctor. We're talking about Gideon and hell and Hades and this and that. All I know is this. Just that place where I was just at was too hellish for me. Who can fully speak of the fullness of God? We can't. But what we need to do is we need to start to understand this. We don't want to go to a place like that. Mm -hmm. Remember I tell you Psalms 131, I think it was where I read against 121 verses at the end of the verse. But his mercy endures forever. Somebody say, his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His mercy His mercy His mercy His mercy His mercy Do you think Brother Humphrey has gone through a little temper tamper because of things of this world? You know, why should I get so much about money or, or jobs or <clears throat> somebody don't like me or... I'm planning to make it home. 
By the grace of God, I plan to make it home. I do plan to make it home, Lord. I plan to make it home. My Bible says that the righteous scarcely be saved. We're really on just and on godly stand. So if you're righteous, only as you can possibly be, and you scarcely make it. Sister Linda, next week, she's got a, she's got a test for her, too. I said, let's go to this today, last night, whatever I know. He said, get her to teach on be ye holy. Oh. Be ye holy. Well, I thought, if you're saved, you're holy. Oh. What do we do with that verse where Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your wise and every sacrifice holy. Well, I thought we're holy against him. Holy. And acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I said, people's not going to know what holiness is until you get in the presence of God. That Isaiah had an Isaiah 6 experience. He found he had a horrible sin. He said, woe is me. What was his sin? He said, I dwell in the midst of the people. I want to clean this. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're a Christian? Yeah, where's a Christian? How many of you know you can get around people that just talk negative stuff? Mm -hmm. Come on. Junk talk. Mm -hmm. Negative talk. Mm -hmm. Worldly talk. Mm -hmm. yes. Trashy yeah. talk. Well, I don't see anything about it. WWJD. Mm -hmm. Well, that on what you.